Hello and welcome to tonight's League of Legends Roundup. We're going to cover the games that took place earlier today and just finished um, in the four major regions. Down below you'll see three links, one to the Discord, the Twitter, and to become a member of my channel. Uh, Discord, we talk about the games as they go on. Discord's active. If you want to go and join, you can. We have a predictions channel, things like that. Twitter, follow me so I can spread my social media, you know, footprint, if you will, and try and uh, grow a Twitter. Um, and I also post the links there as well as on Discord so you guys have them. Third, YouTube memberships. If you would like to know what I think of the games for the next day, who I think is going to win, um, if you do esports gambling or if you just want to know, um, as well as have NFL, fantasy football things like that throughout the week, um, that's $10 a month memberships. Uh, there's also a $3 tier if you just want to support me and help make me th make this sustainable. If you don't, no big deal. Just subscribe if you can. Like the video. Share it. Um, yeah, so that's that. Now for the games today, LCK started us off. Dom Juan and Sandbox at 4 o'clock. Um, I had Dom Juan winning this one. 3-2. Uh, and ended up being 3-1 as you can tell. Um, Duck Dom, 14, 3, and 22 with the team leading 31% of damage. Nugari, 8, 1, and 16, not playing in game two. Um, Prince, 7, 6, and 9 with 32% of sandboxes damage. Closer, 9, 8, and 11. Um, so, Dom Juan, dominant in all the games except game two. Game two, for some reason, Dom Juan, Danny, the Danny, or whoever, the coach, decides it's time to, oh, speaking of Dom Juan, I did a video earlier today of my World's 2022 preview series. Dom Juan was today, uh, T1 yesterday, Gen G the day before. Um, but, so, uh, Nugri does well in game one. They pull him and they put Bird all in in game two. Needless to say, they lost. Um, this can't this can't happen going into Worlds. This has to be fixed. Um, I, honestly, I would leave Bird all home so he's, the coach isn't even tempted. Because this is ridiculous. Um, Nugri is clearly the better of the two options. Um, I thought that the top lane was going to be the point of emphasis. And it was. And bot lane was kind of even. I mean 7, 6, 9 for Prince. He didn't get blown out. But he was kind of non-existent in this series. I mean 7, 6, and 9. He really did not do all that much. You know. So um, it definitely was a uh, one-sided affair. And Sandbox now plays the winner of KT and DRX that play tomorrow. For the final play-in spot. Top and JDG LPL finals started at 4.45 in the morning, my time. Um, JDG would reverse sweep top um, in game one. Or was it reverse sweep? Maybe it wasn't reverse sweep. Um, top started King Tian in game one and spotted JDG a game. And JDG won. They arguably should not have won game five. Um, Kanavi pulled out a Belveth. Sus pick. I was joking in the chat mid mid uh series like he's gonna pull out a belveth just wait that's a win condition and they won with it it was not because of him but jdg won um hope 24 8 and 24 in bot with 34 percent of damage kanavi 21 16 and 27 jackie love 22 12 18 30 percent of tops damage wayward 15 9 and 24 in top lane in just four games because king tian played in game one as expected, JDG won that. That was not because 369 beat King Tian, but I will say when Wayward came back in, he played very well on the NAR, I believe, to win game two. So I think it was a reverse sweep. Um, just Wayward played a fabulous series, without a doubt. Um, you know, they should have started him game one. They really should have. The coach is definitely at fault for their loss, in my opinion. Kanavi with his 21 kills, those were all in his wins. Two of his wins, I believe, had eight and maybe seven kills respectively. So 15 of 21 in two games. Um, this team is just this team wins and loses through Kanavi. Um, tomorrow's um, world's preview is going to be one of these two teams. I still haven't decided which one. I guess I'll flip a coin. Uh, maybe I'll just record both videos so I don't have to record the extra one Saturday um, because we know what seed they are. But uh jdg took this one i had jdg winning this 3-2 and it ended up being that way actually i had him 3-1 uh because i didn't know if king tian was going to play the whole series or not um king tian playing uh only one game made 3-2 possible uh you know very two very good teams kind of made me feel like gen g's on an island right now number one though 
I mean, for a while there, I had these two right up next to them, and now I kind of feel like these two teams are a little sloppy, but they also haven't played the LCK, right? So we don't know um, how the summer meta has, you know, the, the hierarchy of regions within the summer meta. We know what it looked like in spring, but it is not the same meta. Um, you know, to compare MSI and spring results to how region hierarchy is for the major regions would probably be wrong. Um, now people are going to say, well, you do it for the minor regions. Yeah, that's all I've got for the minor regions. So it's just like I always say, it's like a shot in the dark with those minor region power rankings. So um, it is what it is. Third series just finished TL and CLG. CLG got a 2-0 lead. TL reverse swept. Um, so Hansama, 23-9 and 19, 35% of damage. Santorin, 2013 and 32. Luger, 13-5 and 21 for 32% of CLG's damage. And Palafox, 12-12 and 15. So only Luger had more kills and deaths for CLG. Um, so game one and game two, Buipo really inted, picking Jax into Aatrox, which is kind of weird. We don't see that often. Um, got blown out. And then got blown out on a set in game two, I believe dying eight times. And Hans didn't play that well either. Um, and they come back and win. But I do, I was joking in the chat, half joking, half serious. I'm like, well, you know, Rogue has a bad reputation from years and years of not doing well in playoffs. And um, for a second there, it looked like Hans was about to lose, be definitely part of the reason why TL were going to lose this series, right? And be out of playoffs. And um, Rogue just beat Mad Lions, right? They, they upset them. And it was uh, one of those things like, is it, was it Hans Sama that was the thing holding Rogue back? Um, Han showed up well in game three through five, though. Core doing better. Bwipo, they put him on Orn, I think, for game four and, I mean, game three and game four. Um, and kind of, Bwipo is supposed to be the carry, but the thing is, Bwipo picking all these weird picks, he is hurting them. When he does the things he does, even game five, Aatrox, he built weird. And I, I listened to the uh, Double Lip Co stream um, with Medio said Sneaky, I like having those three different opinions of players that just played recently um, and not players that played many years ago um, and don't maybe have that in with scrims and things like that and playing champions queue against, you know, these players to get an idea of what they're like, right? And um, Bwipo building Eclipse was kind of sus. It kind of, it was a high risk, high reward build and it worked out for them. But, um, that is the coin flippiness of Whippo, right? Like, uh, he's like a, the Western, the shy when it comes to that. Like, you know, I don't know if TL is going to be able to play that way against EG or TSM, which we're going to get to in a second. But um, this one, I was happy listening to Silver Scrapes, and I'm like, this is this is good. You know, this is good. That's, um, CLG had a great split, though. We, we have to take that into consideration. I had some CLG fans get upset with me. I didn't have them in the top 25. They obviously played much better. In the um, playoffs, and we then I could have thought they were going to almost beating C9, almost beating TL. Um, they definitely played a lot better. They have a lot to build on going into next year. Um, we'll see what they do. Um, I think there are maybe moves to be made, but that's another video for another time. But you know, this was a good good split for CLG, something to grow off of and uh, move forward with. So. That's it for the roundup. Now on to the games for tomorrow and the sneak peek. All right, now for the sneak peek, we have all four major regions tomorrow. Um, DRX and KT start us off. Like I said, the winner of this one goes on to play Sandbox. DRX 9-9, nine nine, KT 10-8. and eight. Last time they played, week five, uh, first time they played this split, week five, day one, KT had went 2-1, aiming 16-2-14. Uh, series two, week nine, day two, KT would go 2-0. Life, 4-1-22 in a 36 to two um, stomp. Deft versus aiming is what I wanna watch. Um, aiming is the 1v9 for KT right now. I believe when KT, if they go to Worlds, um, they have more to offer with Rascal and top lane, but um, the bot lane is what we're looking at here. Deft, clearly a player that's been around the block, right? Deft has been there, done that. Um, this is not a moment that will be too big for that him. And hypothetically, not too big for Barrel either in top lane. It's just whether Barrel ints or not. Um, there are advantages for DRX in this one. But KT definitely, um, after beating them so bad only a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago, and aiming and life doing as well as they are in bot lane, this is going to be a tall task for DRX. But 
Uh, I think it's going to be a good series. I think, you know, like I said, KT has their advantages. DRX has their advantages. Um, KT, top, uh, DRX, jungle. I think mid's a wash, but it should be a good one. EDG and RNG. Uh, EDG 11 and 5, RNG 12 and 4. EDG knocked RNG out of the playoffs in the, um, you know, right before this is qualifiers. So during the summer playoffs, EDG 1 3 1. Viper 26 4 and 15. Scout versus Zhao, who is what I want to watch. Some people might say, why not uh, Gala and Viper after the last series? And it's like, well, as long as RNG and Ming does not pull out Yumi, I think um, this all falls on to Zhao Hu. Because. I mean, you're almost losing lane. Like, you know you're, you're acknowledging you're going to lose lane on blue side. Um, or put yourself at a disadvantage by having to ban Yumi yourself because you can't give it over. Um, I think that's terrible. I can't believe Ming doesn't play the easiest champion in the game. Um, and Zhao Hu has not done enough. He has not done enough in this meta. This meta has not fit him at all after a dominant MSI performance that really, like, was like, wow, he is setting the meta. And now the meta has shifted to a place where he is not succeeding. Um, Wei has not succeeded. Breathe cannot 1v9. So, um, you know, it's up to Jahu to get around the rift and start making things happen. Whether it's on a Talia or he picks a Galio or he picks a Rise. Some of these picks have been being picked recently that are maybe a little out of the box that we haven't seen for a minute. But it has to be done if they want to succeed. Scout, on the other hand, um, if he can just keep... Last time around, Scout really wasn't all that impactful in the game either. Mid lane was kind of a wash, and it was mainly bot lane that was deciding it. So, as far as I'm concerned, Scout needs to step it up as well. Um, this is a moment where these teams need to step it up. You're in the gauntlet now. It's time. LEC, Misfits and Fnatic, they played three times this split. Um, Misfits winning the first time, week four, day one. Neon, 6-0-4. Oh, uh, final day of the uh, summer split, they would play twice. The final game, Fnatic would win. Upset going 9-0-6 on, I believe, a Zeri in that one with some clutch performances around the Nexus. Um, then they would play a tiebreaker only a short time after. Misfits winning. Vathio 8-1-5 on a Silas, I believe. So Neon versus Upset is one I want to watch. And you're going to say, well, Vathio's their best player. Yeah, he is. He is. Um, but I think Upset is the best player in the in in the in. Well, in Fnatic, for sure. Um, I think Vathio and Upset are pretty close, but this is a bot lane meta. Bot lane is what's deciding this. Um, Misfits topside is awful. Um, irrelevant is very young and therefore irrelevant. I say it every time I talk about him. Um, he's going to play Orn. He's going to play Renekton. He's going to play something that isn't all that impactful. Aatrox, Gragas. Um, but he's against Wonder. And I hope they put, something on, put Wonder on something that he can take advantage of Irrelevant and um, win that lane outright. I think that's something we haven't seen out of Fnatic a lot this split, and I think that's something they should do. Um, I really do. Uh, jungle, Zanzara is very limited. Ban Poppy, ban Skarner, and see what he does. He's going to pick Trundle. Um, and if you can handle Trundle, don't worry about it. Uh, you know, mid lane, Vethio, but then bot lane, Upset and Hilly are definitely the players in this bot lane. Ban Yumi and let it go. Let it let it ride. Um, I think Fnatic uh, bot lane will be able to take advantage of Neon. It just comes down to how by how much. Because I think Bethio is going to put up a fight in mid. As well as the fact that Fnatic likes to pick Lucian Nami. Despite them not being all that great at it. And that's a problem too. So that's that one. And lastly, LCS, EG, and TSM. I mean, EG, 15-3, TSM, 6-12, and 12, EG coming off of a loss to C9, and TSM coming off of a win against FlyQuest. Um, week 3, day 1, EG won. Danny, 5-0-3. Oh, we have to keep in mind, this was when TSM still had Huni and Tactical and Mia. This is not the same um, TSM. The second time they played was this TSM. Week 7, day 1, EG would win. Um, Impact, 6-0-7 oh, on a Gwen. Uh, Maple versus Jojo Poon is what I want to watch. This is a best of five series. This is where Maple should thrive as a veteran, as a player with a ton of world's experience, international experience, like playoffs experience. Um, where Jojo has not been in a lot of best of fives in his career at this juncture. And um, I don't know if he, well, I mean, obviously he played a best of five at MSI, right? Um, and he's played best of fives in spring. But the point is, like, he... 
This is a test. This is still a test. Every time he plays a veteran, respectable mid laner, I think it's a test. Because JoJo can get too aggressive. And if he's playing against somebody that's like, fine, I'm just going to punish you all the time, then they're going to struggle. Um, so he has to step it up in a way that is um, rational on the rift, like making rational, realistic, the right decisions. Um, and aggression is fine, but also be aware of how aggressive you can be in a matchup like this. Cause I think speak is going to go mid and it's going to come down to maple and Jojo. So, um, that's it for, uh, the roundup and the sneak peek for today. If you want to know the predictions of these, become a member of the channel, um, join the discord, follow me on Twitter, like the video. If you like it, subscribe to the channel for more content tomorrow. Like I said, I'm going to do the, um, world's 2022 preview series with either top or JDG as well as the roundup later on in the evening. So thank you for watching and I hope you come back for more content.